If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. Welcome back to Daybreak Live on a Monday morning. This is the fifth day of October. This morning, we welcome our guest, Jeff Wood, infection preventist at Coosa Valley Medical Center, along with Reverend Donnie Blackman. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Good morning. Good, Good to morning. have you with us. And uh, Jeff, exactly what is an infection preventist? So an infection preventionist does a couple of things. One, we want to make sure when you come into the hospital that we deliver the safest care possible. And my role in that is to make sure that you don't leave with anything extra. So you come in with pneumonia or COPD or something like that. So I want to make sure that the lines we put in are, are safe and clean and just basically that you don't leave with an infection when you get there. I look at hand washing. Uh, hand washing is a big uh, proponent of preventing infections. So I really want to want to watch that. And I observed that throughout the throughout the hospital. Well, uh, with COVID-19 uh, as a part of our life now, which none of us enjoy, uh, it even becomes more imperative that we uh, do some of these uh, hygiene things, including washing our hands. Absolutely. One of the one of the good things that could come of this is people realize how important hand hygiene is in every single aspect of of your life. Uh, we, we learn about hand hygiene and in schools you talk about wash your hands before lunch, after using the restroom, but I think from a, from a public health perspective it goes even deeper than that, that, that we constantly need to wash our hands and, and get the organisms and the germs off of our hands as much as possible throughout the day. So that's one of the good things, yeah, I think. Yeah. Of, of and COVID. Brother Donnie, being a part of church here in Silicago with, you know, you're crossing paths with a lot of people every day mm -hmm. and every week. Uh, how does a church plug in to helping prevent disease and infection? Well, I've always felt like not only with the COVID, but other things. And, and this is certainly not meant to bash anybody because we've got different congregations. But I think the church ought to set the example for all that uh, Brother Wood here has been speaking about. We set the example on the distancing. Uh, we set the example on the mass. Uh, and there was a time that the church took the leadership in anything that set an example for others to follow. And I just, I just would like to question the fact, are we really, as a church, are we setting the proper example to protect not only our congregation, but to protect others also. And Jeff, it's not common for us to think about hygiene the way we're thinking about it now. That's correct. That's, that's exactly correct. So, so you have large gatherings, and we talk about those hygiene, you know, um, a couple of things that can happen in places of large gatherings is to have those hand hygiene stations out, have hand sanitizer available. I think we're doing a good job in in public gatherings of keeping our distance. I, I notice one thing um, as I go about my daily routine, standing in lines, standing in the checkout line, mm -hmm. standing um, in different, different areas, people are almost naturally starting to separate themselves. Not quite six foot, but they're putting some distance behind them. Whereas in, we used to line up, you know, back, back to back and, and, and go forward. Now it's, it's that six foot distance and we see that in all of our public gatherings. Now, yeah. now you've been an RN for what, quarter of a century? Yes sir, 25 years. Now, how'd you get started? Um, I actually got started, my, my collegiate career was not very great to begin with. Uh, and so um, I went through some problems and my dad said, hey, why don't you check out this, this RN? And um, I took his advice, you know, it's, it's good to have wise counsel around <laughs> you sometimes. And so I took his advice and looked into it and have never, never looked back. Now you've uh, been five years at Coosa Valley or so? Oh, uh, I've been at Coosa Valley for the majority of that time. Okay. Uh, infection prevention is for five years. I okay. uh, did a little, did a year stint at UAB in their trauma burn unit. So very rewarding job there. But uh, the majority has been right here in my hometown, taking care, taking care of my neighbors and that's what I really enjoy about Coosa Valley. It's got to be fulfilling. Oh, it? absolutely, absolutely. It is. It is very. Uh, it's very fulfilling to to go into 
into the grocery store and see people that you've taken care of. And, and that's what I really love about working at Coosa Valley because I take care of my, my neighbors. So mm -hmm. um, very, very rewarding work. Yeah. Uh, Brother Donnie, how do you guys connect? Well, through, through the hospital. Uh, and uh, not only do I respect Brother Wood here as a professional, but he's a dear friend of mine. And mm -hmm. uh, we've always had uh, over the years till we got to the COVID, uh, they probably wouldn't hardly ever a day went by. You didn't see me go from room to room. I've always tried to respect the rules at the hospital and just had a good relationship with him. And uh, not only, and, and I'll add this, he's got some compassion about what he does. And I, I appreciate that about him. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, as an infection preventist, uh, walk us through a typical day for you. Okay. All right. Uh, so I usually usually get to the hospital, and now with COVID, one of the first things I do is look at our, our numbers. Uh, currently this morning, I've already looked at them. We've got seven persons that are positive. We have two persons that are under investigation. And so what I want to do is I want to look at the previous day's numbers, look at the number of, of, of tests that we did and the number of results that, that came back. Uh, so I do that, and then I head to our ICU. Uh, ICU is one of my big units. That's, that's where the, the majority of population in the intensive care use is very prone to infection. Mm -hmm. So we go through a safety huddle there every, every, month, every morning. We go through that huddle. We identify patients that could be at risk for infection. And we do we decide the different interventions that we can do to prevent those infections from happening. Then I do my rounds up on the on the different units, um, and that usually takes me through lunch. And I have lunch at the Hickory Street Cafe. Which is very good. It, it is. It is. Uh, fine folks there. So uh, after lunch, I usually do computer work and uh, surveillance. So I'm also looking for any type of superbug. So there's some bugs out there, some organisms that really do not respond to our antibiotics. And so I want to make sure that we don't have that in Coosa Valley. And um, I, that's mainly my, my afternoon. Is COVID-19, the traffic at Coosa Valley, is it trending downward? Yes, sir. We had, we had a very busy July and August, uh, but what we've seen September, we started trending down after the the governor released the mass mandate. Mm -hmm. We saw a definite. So decrease. you say that is a clear indication that that's been successful. The masking. Absolutely, yes, sir. We saw a, a clear indication that masking decreased the number of positive cases, um, and so we had a we had a much better September, October. We're only five days in now, so it's it's hard to tell, but. Um, Typically, what we're seeing towards the end of September and, the, and on into October, what we're seeing is about four to five people showing up in our emergency department that are requiring testing that meet the criteria for testing. And so we're testing those. And, and so far, so far in October, we don't have any positive test. That's great. So that, that is good. Those people that I mentioned previously, the seven in the hospital, those are patients that are left over from mm -hmm. September. Uh, it's flu season as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, now is the time for everyone to get their flu vaccine. It is so very important to get your flu vaccine, especially for this year, uh, because we have COVID and we're gonna have flu, so we don't need, you don't need both of them. And uh, I, I'm curious to, to see just from the science, if this masking's actually gonna help our flu rates. My, my thinking is that it, that it will, um, but it will be very interesting to see how the, the masking affects our flu. So the flu shots itself. Yes, sir. I've heard pros and cons of the flu shot. Your thoughts on that? Um, all pros. I take my flu vaccine every single year. I, I never have any any issues with it. Uh, it's a it's a dead virus, so people do not get the flu from from the influenza vaccination. 
and it just it provides protection sometimes depending on the year so the scientists will look at last year's type of influenza and then they'll develop the flu vaccine for the next year based on the previous years so some years you get 35 percent effectiveness some years you get 40 50 percent um, which you you may say say well that doesn't sound like a lot but if you can prevent 30 out of 100 people from getting the flu, um, that's significant. And we can't forget the deaths associated with the flu. The, the elderly population, 65 and older, are very vulnerable to death associated with, with the flu. So it is Im important that those, type, those people mm -hmm. get the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. Jeff Wood, Infection Preventive Cusa Valley Medical Center, along with Brother Donnie Blackman. Brother Donnie is a city councilman here in Silicon Cuyahoga and works at the local church, has a program here every morning on WOTM and WOIL. Brother Donnie, how can the church get involved in making sure that we do the right things and we are at the front of leadership? Practicing what we preach. Uh, and... And sometimes I may turn it into sort of like a little joke, and those little droplets, and we're all we all have those, and they just go out. And I've always considered myself and others uh, more of a hellfire and brimstone type preacher. And the louder you get, and the more air, the further those droplets, <laughs> if I'm right, is going to go. So we need so do, to don't sit on the front row. <laughs> well, it's risky to sit on the front row. <laughs> And uh, but but I want to I want to throw this in, Brother Jimmy Dale. And first of all, I want to thank you for allowing us to come. That's to our do honor because you're part of this. And uh, but Coosa Valley Medical Center, we are absolutely wonderfully blessed not only to have our hospital, to have people such as uh, Brother Jeff here, and I call him a brother because he's a brother in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And but not only him, we've got some good, compassionate people at Coos Valley. They 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 love people. They you can show that in how they tend to each other and how they tend to their patients and all. So we're blessed to do that. And uh, that that uh, two that's under investigation now, there's a blessing in that because just yesterday or a day or two back, there was three under investigation. So by the efforts of Coosa Valley and the staff there they determined that one of those could be taken off mm -hmm. of that list. And Jeff, uh, our appreciation and thanks to all those special frontline workers uh, at the hospital. I mean, I've been in there and, and seen the, uh, for better description, the garb that they have to wear. And I'm thinking, man, I'd hate to do this all day long, but uh, our salute to them today, and I know you're very proud to be a part of that team. Yes, sir, absolutely. The, the PPE, personal protective equipment that we put on, uh, consists of uh, a hairnet. We wear goggles. We have face masks. You have a yellow isolation gown and gloves. And you think about that. Each time we go <laughs> into that room, you got to put that stuff on. And... It is not very, um, it's not breathable because it prevents anything from getting on you. So it's very warm. And our, our staff does a, does a tremendous job putting that stuff on and off. And uh, I mean, it, it's just, it really is a pleasure to work with good people like that, that, that really, not only do they do that to protect themselves, but they do that to protect other patients as well. They don't want to get anything on their, on their scrubs or on their uniform and then take it into another room. That's the purpose of the isolation gowns. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great, great thing to work yeah. with good people. Uh, to be honest, prior to early part of 2020, I'd not paid any attention or heard anything about this coronavirus. And then uh, in uh, March, when it really hits, Everybody's paying attention to it. Uh, what else could be out there? There's you always. We've never heard of this yeah, thing yeah, before. Yeah, there, at, at the at the CDC, there's a whole whole division of people that look for emerging viruses, hmm. and um, I actually watched a, a documentary 
on these uh, virus hunters and they go to a lot of different um, livestock places and they're and they're constantly looking for the next virus that could could come out um, now that's you know those those folks are <laughs> that they, they're they're mm -hmm. out there looking for literally for a needle in a in a haystack wow. you know it's 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 something out there but we're always and part of my job is in surveillance and so we talk I talked about I was looking for those organisms that um, will be a, will not be affected by our antibiotics but also I'm looking for people that come in with like symptoms and then I can take those like symptoms. Let's say that all of a sudden we have six people show up in our ER. They have nausea, they have vomiting, headache, fever, um, and muscle weakness. So six people coming in with the same type of symptoms is very strange. So you have to say, well, what's going on here? And that's another part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you never know. It could be food poisoning. It could be some type of emerging uh, virus or bacteria, you just never know. So uh, those are one of the things that we, we well, look for. Well, with the, the news breaking Friday of uh, President Trump and, and the First Lady uh, testing positive for COVID-19, and, and uh, we've seen throughout the weekend the high fever, uh, or especially on Friday with President Trump and, and uh, the, the lack of energy and struggling for oxygen a little bit, and, and that's all part of this COVID-19. Yes, sir, absolutely. So, so those, are the, those are the classic symptoms that we go to. I've had personal experience with uh, someone with COVID-19, and I tell you, um, I saw that person be the sick as I've ever seen mm -hmm. her. Uh, she was she was totally wiped out for three days, and um, it's a uh, it's a pretty serious serious thing. I know some people don't don't think it's that serious, but actually um, very very sick. That's that's related to it. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, at the hospital before we go this morning, you know we we think we go to the hospital. You know everything is squeaky clean, and you you can't get sicker being in a hospital. But these infections are everywhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Healthcare acquired infections is the last time I looked. I think it's the number three cause of death. Uh, so absolutely, hospitals. Uh, can be a source of infection. We do a great job at Coosa Valley. We, our infections rates are less than two, less than 0.2%. Wow. So you have a really good chance of, of coming out of Coosa Valley without an infection. And that goes back, I tell you, I tell you two things that, that occur to me um, our hand hygiene, we do a great job of hand hygiene, and our environmental service people. Though environmental services, does not get the credit usually that they deserve in keeping things clean at the hospital. Um, they do an absolutely phenomenal job over there of keeping those things. One of the things that I do to, to make sure that the area is clean is I'll take a fluorescent gel and I'll put it on my hands and I'll go in, if I know a patient's being discharged, I'll go in and I'll touch two or three areas in the room. Hmm. I don't tell the housekeeper, the EVS person, that I've done that. They'll go in, they'll clean the room, and then I'll take the worker back in and I'll say, okay, here's what, here's what we did, let's see how you do. And we'll shine a fluorescent light and it'll show my handprints or it'll show my lack of handprints. And majority of the time it shows my lack of handprints. That makes sweat so. pop out on my forehead. <laughs> that's great though, that's good. Well, that's one, that's one thing that we do to, to make sure our our housekeepers are doing their job, and, and they do a phenomenal job. Finally, before we go this morning, with, with COVID-19 seem to be relaxing its hold a little bit, what about uh, uh, the visitation at the hospital? Who can who can't now? Yes, we're, we're currently working um, with all of our leadership on developing those, those policies. Now, we've been open on our, on our medical floor. We've allowed one visitor in our labor and delivery, those those people can have one visitor. Are the areas that have really been limited are the intensive care unit, the emergency department, and our COVID floor. And those are the areas that we're working through right now to develop those those visitations. Um, 
the COVID floor will still be no visitors. That's that's the best thing to do unless there's yeah. extenuating circumstances. The, the emergency department, um, we're, we're probably going to relax that a bit. So those should be out and, and you should be able to to see that communication through our social media, Facebook yeah, and, page. And quickly, one other thing, kind of recap the numbers at Coosa Valley Medical Center with COVID-19. So this morning we have seven persons that are positive and we have two that are under investigation. But things are looking much better. Yes, sir. Yes, All sir. All right. Thank you both for coming this Thank morning. Thank you. And Brother Donnie, before we go this morning, uh, remind us all as, and there's a lot of uh, people who go to church, and uh, the number of them haven't been going to church because they're afraid, because, you know, this COVID-19, and they're, they're staying home. But, uh, you know, there's some sunshine out there, too. They are, and, and I tell people, if, if you don't feel safe, then that's up to you where you come or not. But we need to set an example of, of showing that we're concerned about their well-being and other people that's going to come in contact with well-being. So I, I'm one that absolutely believes that the church ought to set a example or the prime example for everybody else to follow. And uh, uh, once again, I appreciate uh, I picked up some stuff from Brother Wood here that, that I didn't know. Uh, I guess you was talking about the uh, the medical white glove treatment is what, what you was talking about a while ago. So all of that's good. And uh, folks, I, I'm telling you, uh, protect yourself, protect others, practice that. And, and, and listen, there may be times that you may have to bend a little, but you know what? Much is better. A little less than much is better. So anything we can do to help cut down the risk of somebody, and it is real. And real quickly, I've already gotten words about how people is bashing our president and making jokes about what's got. Let me tell you something, people. Don't make a joke about this. This is a real crisis, and a lot of people, I don't want the church world to think, well, I'm a Christian, and God's just going to protect me from getting this. Uh, it's real, and Christians get it. Just a dear brother in the Lord of mine, a pastor, just died a couple of weeks ago with it. So, folks, I'm telling you, we can have faith in God. If I fall and break my leg, it don't matter how much I deny my leg is broke. If it is broke, it's broke. <laughs> and the same way with this virus. It's out there, people. What we need to do is pray for God to allow somebody to make a, a come up with the the virus protection, the the vaccine that will bring this to a halt. And if we'll do that, I believe that if we band together, the more threads you put together, the harder it is to break. So let's let's band together and protect our people. All right, appreciate it, uh, Jeff Wood, infection preventive at Coos Valley Medical Center. Brother Donnie Blackman uh, here in Silicon. Brother Donnie will be along about seven thirty this morning with. Uh, preaching and teaching the old-time gospel. We appreciate both you guys coming. Have a great day today. More Daybreak right after this.